Hey folders, welcome to your floor transition series. So today we're going to be taking a look at going from the pole, from a seated position on the pole to the floor with the carousel dismount. So that's video number one. This is probably the most used transition as it's super simple, but it does require a little bit more strength than you think because essentially you're performing a negative chin up. In the next six weeks, we'll be taking a look at a variety of transitions that you can use to improve the performance of your routines. The carousel dismount, the back hook dismount, and the twisted grip pole slide. This video itself will be covering the carousel dismount, one of the most wildly popular and used dismounts from the pole to the floor. The back hook dismount is one of my favorites. It provides an elegant twist on a regular dismount. The twisted grip pole slide is a great way to go from a standing position to a laying position on the floor in order to perform your floor work. It does require the use of a twisted grip though, so ensure that you are 100% confident in using the grip before performing the slide. Proper warm-up is essential. Not only does it allow the blood to begin flowing to the necessary extremities, but by doing so it aids in injury prevention. Always ensure you are fully warmed up before attempting any pole work. Pumps are a great warm up for everything from shoulders and hip flexors to the low back. Really focus on keeping the shoulders away from the ears and the hips low and extended. Hanging scapular retractions are the perfect warm up to replicate any kind of arm hold or hang. This ensures your muscles pull your shoulders down and away from the ears. Band rotations are a good prehabilitation exercise to warm and strengthen the muscles of the rotator cuff to prevent injury. Sideline leg raises mimic the exact movement for leg openers. These target the outer hip muscles by increasing blood flow and flexibility. Hip presses activate the posterior chain and strengthen the core. V-sits warm up the hip flexors and quadriceps to hold the legs away from the body. Side stretches open up the obliques and lats to ensure a better range of motion. Wrist warm-ups are necessary to increase flow through the palms and fingers as well as prevent injury to the wrist itself. So the carousel dismount is by far the most frequently used and simple way to get your body off of the pole and onto the floor. There are a couple of different variations um, to go through with the carousel dismount depending on your fitness level and your pole level. So I will be giving you those in the following video. Just ensure that you are always, always, always protecting your neck and your shoulders by keeping your shoulders away from your ears.
important in a carousel dismount as you don't want to just leave them slacking. So what you want to do in a carousel position is you're going to take your knees nice and wide and touch your toes together behind your back. From here you want, you want to squeeze your bum to thrust your hips forward and arch your back, which is what creates a nice elegant look. So the next variation of this carousel dismount is using the extended chin up. So we're going to begin in the same way. You're going to come up onto the pole, placing your hands close to your face as well as close together, tucking those elbows, removing the legs from the pole, and then you want to slowly unbend the arms before you release the grip to land softly on the knees. Notice as we unbend the arms that it is in a controlled way. So you never want to drop all of your weight um, into your shoulders, which is what would happen if you just went from a flex position to a dead hang position, which would also cause a lot of shoulder damage. So always ensure that the contraction is slow moving and controlled as you release the muscle contraction from the biceps. As you extend, you want to ensure that your shoulders stay down from your ears. So the point at which you switch to releasing your grip versus extending your elbows is that when your arms are almost fully extended, but your shoulders are still down from your ears versus hanging into your shoulders. So that is the point at which you would start to release your, the grip on your hands to cover the rest of the ground. The biggest problem with carousel dismounts is truthfully just fear. You really, really have to trust your upper body um, that you're going to be able to hold yourself and that's what's going to allow you to remove your legs from the pole. So when you're just beginning, by all means, keep your thighs close to the pole to allow a little bit more support and slowly as you get better, start to take them off. Another common problem is forgetting to switch your hands. So everyone's going to have one arm more dominant than the other, but what I suggest is every time you're practicing, switch your grip. So if you place your left hand above and that's your dominant arm, next two times you do your carousel dismount, switch to your right arm. This is just going to um, take away any muscular balance that you're going to create by only performing the move on one side. Conditioning exercises are a great way to increase your strength off of the pole, which in turn will improve your skills on the pole. Teddy holds are a great way to improve the ability to hold your body weight, as well as improve muscular endurance. Push-ups target the chest, shoulders, and arm muscles. They help you increase your overall strength off the pole so that tricks on the pole will be easier. Simple pole deadlifts. This exercise gives you the most bang for your buck. Not only does it improve your grip, upper body, and core muscles, it can also be progressed depending on your level. Single leg hip presses are a progression of the basic hip press that targets the low back, glutes, and hamstrings. This exercise trains unilaterally and is more challenging. High are a great exercise to strengthen the obliques and the shoulders.